I think by now most of you probably know who I am, but for those who don't, I'll introduce myself. I'm Lori Edwards. I'm a school resource officer with the Lakeland Police Department. I am the director for the Do the Right Thing program, and I would like to welcome you all to the 16th annual Do the Right Thing Banquet. Our program exists because we have wonderful sponsors. And if it weren't for those sponsors, we would not be able to do the things that we do to recognize these kids. As I said earlier, our department allows us to do it, but it's our sponsors who make it possible. So we do have a couple of our sponsors here tonight, so I would like to recognize them first. From Sunny's Barbecue Southside, I have Carol Johnson and Ashley Hart. And from the City of Lakeland Electric and Water, I have Mr. Joel Ivey. Now we have many more sponsors, but those are the ones that are with us here tonight. But again, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. So let's just give all the rest of them a round of applause too. We also have some of our Do the Right Thing board members here tonight. Uh, first on our list is Bonnie Abrado. She is a community volunteer. She has served on our board for how many years, Bonnie? I know since before I was doing this. 15 years. So, and this is our 16th year, so she's been around a while. So thank you so much for your continued service to our program. Next, we have Greg Bondurant from the Polk County School Board. <laughs> Retired from the Polk County School Board just recently. Well, as of the 31st. Oh, okay, as of the 31st, he'll be retiring. And Greg has been on our board, I think, since its inception, right, in 2000. Yes. So, and we, um, we really enjoy having Greg uh, on our board. He does a lot for us, so thank you, Greg. We also have Alicia Daniels. She's another community volunteer. Thank you, Alicia. You've been with us for several years now, too, and I thank you. Okay, now we also have numerous individuals from the Polk County School Board with us tonight. So, as I call your name, please stand. First we have, well, who's my sergeant tonight? It's not Sergeant Coons. Who's sergeant tonight? Neil, Sergeant Neil? Sergeant Neil with the ROTC from Lakeland High School. Again, we have Greg Bondurant. We have Diane Bondurant. We have Lee Brackman from Rochelle School of the Arts, assistant principal. His lovely wife, Gina, was not able to make it tonight. She's also with the school board. That's an inside joke. Uh, Mrs. Dulcia Hearns, assistant principal, Sleepy Hill Middle School. Did Joyce Powell make it from McKeel Academy? She's here. She's over there. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't get to meet with you earlier, ma'am. Uh, Kelly Lane, she's the principal for Solutions Academy. We have Mr. Ty Bruno, principal of Southwest Middle School. We have Vivian Thibault Bennett. She's a teacher at Highland City Elementary. And her son is one of our recipients tonight. Kelly Lane from Solutions Academy. Are there any other school board members here that I failed to mention? Mr. Bennett, correct? Scott Lake Elementary. Scott Lake Elementary. Anyone else that I missed? Thank you all for what you do at our schools every single day. I know it means a lot to me as a parent with uh, children in school. Uh, I'm sure a lot of these other folks thank you as well for everything that you do. Next, I want to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight. I, I told a, a few of the gentlemen from our senior staff earlier, I got to hear Mr. S.L. Frisbee speak um, probably about a year and a half ago as he addressed the International Baccalaureate students. And as I sat there and I listened to him, I was in awe. Uh, I was so impressed and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I got to get him. He's got to be the keynote speaker for, for our banquet one year because he just has a way of reaching kids and he has a very special message Spe special that was the cookie i think 
spe special message. So let me tell you a little bit about SL. SL Frisbee the fourth. He's a Florida journalist for half a century. He joined the family newspaper business in 1953 at the age of 12 as a carrier for the Polk County Democrat. He's the fourth generation of his family to pursue a career in journalism. While enrolled at Florida State University, he was employed as a reporter at the Tallahassee Democrat for three years, covering everything from the police beat to the school board, including the early days of the civil rights movement. He was commissioned as second lieutenant upon graduation in 1962, and after a two-year hitch in the Army in Washington, D.C., he rejoined the community newspaper business that was founded in Bartow in 1931 by his great-grandfather and his grandfather. He eventually succeeded his father as president of Frisbee Publishing Company, Inc., which he often has cited as proof that anyone can become president of a company, especially if their father owns the company. <laughs> Upon joining the family business in 1964, Frisbee also joined the Florida National Guard, retiring 30 years later with the rank of colonel. I think that deserves a round of applause in itself. After, his, after all of his children had said they had no interest in a newspaper career, S.L. and Mary, his wife and business partner, sold the company to Suncoast Media Group on January 1, 2007, remaining with Suncoast under a three-year employment contract. They retired on December 31, 2009. S.L. continues to write his column and an editorial each week. In retirement, he wrote a book, Frisbee's Laws, 20 Surefire Rules for Successful Management and he published it on November 11, 2011. In that same year, he was named a life member of the Florida Press Association, of which he was president in 1966 and 67. And in July of 2013, he was inducted into the Florida Newspaper Hall of Fame. He served Holy Trinity Episcopal Church as treasurer for 20 years, and in his own words, has held various other positions of community and professional leadership that don't pay anything, but they look good on your obituary. <laughs> He believes the world needs more laughter and has said that if people cannot enjoy at least three good laughs at his funeral, he does not intend to die. <laughs> don't laugh too much. I don't need him croaking here tonight, please. <laughs> that was an afterthought. So please help me in welcoming S.L. Frisbee IV. much for that uh, for that introduction which was uh, long <laughs> how can I say I wrote it myself <laughs> one thing that uh, she didn't mention when she said she saw me speak a while back uh, it was actually a year and a half ago and she said uh, can you come speak to, to this group next May I said well I, I would love to and I turned to my wife and I said any reason why I can't make a accept a speaking engagement in May. She said, not really. She said, I'm going to Scotland in May. You're invited to come along. If you don't care to, to come, you can go make your speech. <laughs> so uh, I went to Scotland last year and missed your banquet last year, but I'm very pleased that uh, Lori had the, the uh, patience to wait for me to get here. Uh, she mentioned also, because I put it in there, about the book. You know, Every journalist thinks that he's got a great book inside him just waiting to come out. And writing a book, I have learned uh, one more law. There's 20 laws in Frisbee's, uh, in, uh, 20 of Frisbee's laws. I've learned the 21st law. If you want to write a book, write a book. If you want to get rich, buy a lottery ticket because your chances of getting rich are much better with a lottery ticket than writing a book. I think I saw an author there vigorously agreeing with me. I have made over the years a, a lot of talks to, to uh, uh, groups of all ages and interests, uh, but tonight I'm speaking primarily to students, and I see three of them that are close enough for that I can make eye contact with them. So I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to ask all the students from every grade, from, from kindergarten to, if we've got any graduate uh, students, you're welcome here too, but the kindergarten through high school, all the students, come down here please, and I'll be glad for all you adults to listen to what I have to say, but you may not be too impressed by it. The students uh, hopefully will find something useful. 
I would like to see who it is that I'm talking to. kind of held my breath because I wasn't sure if anybody would accept the invitation, except uh, I did go to three tables to tell them that I was going to ask this exactly that. So thank, thank all of you guys for coming down here. It was close to 25 years ago when my son, as he was nearing the age when he was about to go out on his own to college and, and on to his adult life, asked me what was the most important piece of advice I could give him. I cannot tell you what it means to a father to have his son ask that question. I told him I would have to think about it for a while. A few days later, I gave him my answer, and it wasn't one thing. It was a letter four or five pages in length. The most important thing I told him was always do the right thing. I have spoken on this theme many times, and I always say that I don't believe that any human being is capable of always doing the right thing. But if we make that our goal in life, if we always strive to do the right thing, we, each of you, will make the world a better place. We will admit the highest standards that our parents and our teachers could possibly ever set for us. In short, if we always do the right thing, we will, you will, make a difference. You know what? You guys are way ahead of me. You are being honored here tonight because you have already done the right thing. You are making a difference in your corner of the world, in your homes, in your classrooms, in your schools, in your communities. I went online to read up something about your organization and some of the activities that you have been honored for, and man, was I impressed. I'm proud to be with you tonight, and I'm proud that Officer Lori Edwards invited me a year and a half ago to be your speaker. I was a manager in business for nearly 50 years, and in that time I hired a lot of people, many of them for their first full-time job. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you five keys to success in the workforce, success, ways to achieve getting that first job. But I'm going to ask you for a little audience participation as we go along, which is one reason why I'll ask you all to come down front. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things as we go along. Let me talk about one of the newest and greatest threats to your success and to your safety. And no, I'm not talking about drugs. And we all know that drugs are a major problem to people of all ages. I'm talking about technology, about the Internet, <coughs> and all the opportunities that the Internet offers, opportunities for both good and for harm. If you have an iPhone, an iPad, an iPod, or any other such device, whether or not it starts with an I, raise your hand. iPads, iPods, what's the other one, iPhones? Okay, keep your hands up. And if you don't have one of these devices, but you have a friend who does and who sometimes lets you use it, raise your hand. Maybe I should say friends or brothers or sisters since I realize that they're not always the same. Looks to me like that covers the vast majority of the young people staying in front of me. Okay, take your hands down and answer this question. Once you put something on the internet, whether it's a photo of yourself or a friend being silly or misbehaving or something that you wrote in anger or something bad that you said about somebody, how long does it stay there? If you think it stays there for an entire month, raise your hands. No takers on that one. How many of you think that it's going to stay there for an entire year? Show of hands. You guys are way ahead of me. <laughs> I guess I might as well skip the part about how many of you think it's going to stay there for five years and get right to the point. How many of you think that when you put something on the internet, good, bad, silly, angry, that it's going to stay there forever? You are absolutely right. Anything that you put on the internet will stay there forever, and forever is a long, long time. I have a friend who manages a newspaper, in fact he's a guy who took my place after I retired, who told me that when he gets a job application, the first thing he does is goes to the internet to see if the applicant has posted anything stupid. 
If he has, no matter how long ago, that application goes straight into the trash. That's one danger of our electronic society. The internet never, ever forgets. So don't ever put anything on the internet that you wouldn't want the whole world to see because anybody in the world might someday see it. Second, let me see how many of you like to read posts or look at pictures of your friends, send and receive messages, do whatever it is you do with Facebook. How many of you like to do that on, on your devices? I'll raise my other hand too for my wife. <laughs> I suspect that most of us do. But did you know that using your phone or your iPad while driving, and most of you will be driving in the next few years, a couple of you probably already are, that driving while texting is almost as dangerous as driving drunk. That boggles the mind. I see Mr. Walker over here nodding, and I suspect that there are some police officers out there who probably would agree with that. Think about that. Texting while you're driving is almost as dangerous as driving drunk. I was watching a piece on NBC Nightly News a couple of nights ago, and it said that an average of eight people die every day in traffic accidents caused by texting while driving. And of those eight people killed in accidents caused by texting while driving, six of them are teenagers. That is tragic. So when you get your driver's license, remember that. When your attention is not focused completely on your driving, you might as well be driving with a blindfold over your eyes. Even kids using cell phones while walking on the sidewalks have been known to step into a street in front of a car and get killed. It happens way, way too often. So enjoy your electronics for what they can do for you. I use my iPad to find out more about your Do the Right Thing program tonight, but I did it sitting at my desk and not behind the wheel of my car. Don't use your devices to put something stupid on the internet, and don't let your devices distract you from being safe. Okay, I said I would give you five tips for success when you graduate from school and apply for your first job. I've given this talk to classes from the fifth grade through the senior year, from the best and brightest students, the international baccalaureate classes at Bartow High School, to students who are struggling to make passing grades. The same rules apply to all of them. I always tell them that if you ever want to amount to much, you have to graduate from high school. As an employer, that high school diploma tells me that you set a goal and you didn't let anything stop you from achieving it. If you didn't give up in school, you're probably not going to give up in the job that I may hire you for. Get your high school diploma. After that, vocational school, community college, university degree, sure, those are important for many jobs, but a high school diploma is more than important. It is essential to your success. Don't let anything stop you from completing high school. Education, that is the first of my five keys to success in the workplace. Second one is skills. You have a lot of these already, and you will learn more as you progress through school. One of the most important skills in our high-tech age, as I just alluded to, is learning to type really, really well. It's becoming almost as important to learn to type as it is learning to read. That is a key to, to every piece of, of, of internet or, or computer soft or hardware that you're ever going to handle. You've got to be able to type. Just about that. It's not in my notes here. Uh, a week or so ago, I took my 13-year-old grandson who lives in South Lakeland up to an uh, event where he was being honored, and uh, it was in uh, Winter Park. And I didn't know where Winter Park was, let alone being able to follow my way, find my way around. But I had my, my trusty uh, <coughs> GPS instructions on how to get there. When we left, I said, Liam, buddy, once I get on the interstate, I'm good to get us back to South Lakeland. But I'm in the middle of Winter Park, and I have the slightest idea how to get home. Can you do something with that magic iPhone to tell me how to get back to Lakeland? And he said, take me home. <laughs> he didn't do any of this. He just threw up his iPhone and he said, take me home. Obviously, we got back. I'm here, right? Thank you. 
Now, I suspect that this advice is really not necessary for you because electronic devices have become both our masters and our servants. And you probably type faster with your two thumbs than I can with all ten of my fingers. Technology is changing at the fastest pace in the history of the world. Well, I haven't lived for the entire history, but I've lived as best I can tell longer than anybody else in this room. My advice to you, keep up with that technology. Computer skills are important now, and they will become even more important in the future. <coughs> Third, work habits. Get to class on time. Turn in, ooh, I, was a, mm. I understand, I was never very good at that myself. Turn in your work on time. Obey the rules. Your teachers expect you to do these things, and so will your employers. The work habits that you develop in school will carry over into the workplace, and those work habits will serve you well. Fourth, and this is the one everybody hates to hear about, attitude. All your life you've heard adults talk about attitude. Kid, you got a bad attitude. I don't like your attitude. Don't cop an attitude with me. If you've ever had a teacher tell you or a classmate you've got a bad attitude, raise your hand. I go ahead and raise both hands. This happened to me more than once. <laughs> I'm not telling you. I'm the perfect example. I'm telling you this is what I've learned. Well, I've got bad news about attitude. Everything that you've heard about attitude is true. Your employer wants his or her customers and employees to be around pleasant people who have positive, upbeat attitudes. I interviewed a lot of applicants who had education, skills, and good work habits. I also looked for people with good attitudes. Good attitudes about life, about themselves, about their jobs, about their employers, about their co-workers. A positive attitude is essential to your success. And finally, the fifth trait, integrity. And I can give you the world's simplest definition of integrity, and it's why you are being recognized tonight. Integrity means always do the right thing. Always do the right thing. And I wish you could see all the smiles that I'm getting when I say that. You will never get a tougher challenge than that. There are no loopholes. If you can achieve it, even if you fall a little bit short every now and then, you will rise to the top of whatever field you choose. Five keys to success, and I invite you to repeat them after me. Education. Education. Skills. Skills. Work habits. Work habits. Attitude. Attitude. I like that. <coughs> Finally, integrity. Always do the right thing. You're a great bunch of students. You're an inspiration to your parents, to your teachers, and to me. Congratulations on your recognition tonight for doing the right thing. Keep up the good work. Good luck to you. And don't text while you walk back to your tables. <laughs> job so I want to thank SL Frisbee for coming out tonight I hope y'all enjoyed his speech I know I did um, and we can always learn something even as adults we can learn something from somebody else and uh, I truly appreciate you coming out tonight and as a small token of appreciation I just got a little something here for you so in appreciation to SL Frisbee the fourth guest speaker Lakeland Police Department May 19 2016 so special that I'm glad that I resisted the temptation and believe me it was hard. I looked at the list of sponsors tonight and what's the first one I saw was Krispy Kreme Donuts. <laughs> I said do I have the nerve to stand in front of a room full of police officers one of whom told me when he got here he said uh, I saw you on Memorial Boulevard you passed me. 
<laughs> so I figured, no, nah, I'm not going to do a donut joke tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. Now y'all see why I said I liked him, right? He's even funny. He's got a great sense of humor. The police department, we, we believe in our youth. These children are our future. And that is one of the reasons that we have this program. Uh, we want to know that we have a nice, bright, sunny future. Some days it looks a little dim, you know, but it's days like this where the sun shines so bright. Um, as my daughter said, her friend told her the other day about her toenail polish. Your toenail polish is brighter than my future. Uh, but these, <laughs> I thought it was quite clever. Um, but you know, that's what I see here. Uh, I see a very bright future for all of the, the youth in here, and I see a bright future for the rest of us because parents, y'all are doing a great job. Teachers, administrators, you're doing a great job. Um, we all know that it takes a village, and everybody is coming together to do their part. And so I want to take just a second and have you all give yourselves a hand for the job that you're doing. We have some other special guests here this evening, and I'm going to ask Mr. Greg Bondurant if he would come up to help me with this. Do the Right Thing isn't just about the things that you've seen at the uh, ceremonies at the police department, and it's not just about what you've heard tonight, but we have another component, and a very uh, important component to this, and that is our scholarship component. Um, once they're out of high school, that doesn't mean that we stop recognizing them uh, for doing the right things. And we have three very special young folks here tonight who are graduating this year, and they are going to be scholarship recipients. So I'm going to have Mr. Greg Bondurant read those names out. So as your name is called, would you please come and stand at the front of the room? Thank you, Lori. Could I get Noah McNair to come up here, please? I'm going to call you one at a time because I want to read something to you or about you. Noah is a senior at Harrison School of the Arts. He will be graduating with a 4.195 GPA and will be attending Palm Beach Atlantic University in the fall. He wants to major in cinema and television, and his goal is to produce educational television, documentary short films, and public service announcements addressing children and their parents. He has a history of outstanding <coughs> academic success as well as public service to the community based on all of his achievements. We are proud to present Noah with this scholarship check for $1,000. Danae Rogers, would you come up here, please? Hi. Danae is a senior at Lake Gibson High School. She will be graduating with a 4.13 GPA and hopes to attend Florida State University in the fall. However, she attend where excuse me, however, wherever she attends, she will be majoring in nursing and aspires to become a nurse anesthetist. Danae also has a history of outstanding academic success as well as public service to the community based on all of her achievements. We're proud to present Danae with this scholarship check for $1,000. Logan Edwards. Logan Edwards is a senior at International Baccalaureate School on the Bartow High School campus. He will be graduating with a 4.127 GPA and will be attending the University of Central Florida in the fall. Logan will be majoring in biology and continuing his education for his doctorate specializing in genetics. 
He was recently accepted into the highly coveted Excel program at UCF, and he will also be joining the marching band for the UCF Knights. Like the others, Logan has a history of outstanding academic success as well as public service to the community. Based on all of his achievements, we are proud to present Logan with this scholarship check for $1,000. I wish I had a GPA like that when I was in school. <laughs> that is super. Congratulations to all three of y'all. Outstanding. Again, these scholarships are thanks to our sponsors. a lot of people already this evening. We've done our senior staff. We've done some special folks from City Hall. We've recognized sponsors and individuals from the Polk County School Board. We've also recognized some scholarship recipients. But, but, we want to see who the heroes are here tonight. And we have some very, very special heroes here. They're the reason that we come together. They're the reason this program got started. And I'm going to have Mr. Bondurant call out the names of these individuals. Now, as your name is called, I want you to please stand up where you are. And if I could get my fellow SROs to come up and help me, we've got just a little something to give to each one of you. So as your name is called, please stand, and we will be right with you. SROs? Y'all can come up, please. Officer Mackey, put your phone away, please. Come on. <laughs> Busted. Okay, as I call your name, if you will, please stand. I hope I get your names right. Some of them are a little difficult for me. Matthew Bennett. First one. Dylan Butler. Not here. Not here. Cleopatra Dawkins. Tierra Durant. Christian Garson. <laughs> Dajara Johnson. <laughs> Judith Har Paris. Alexander Rance. Chisora Singer. Brittany Wilson. Okay, thank you. Greg Antone. Antoine, excuse me. Dante Colprith. Prince Grant. Who's Prince? You didn't make it? Okay. Dontavia Goodman. La Anthony Jackson Jr. Milana Lee. Liana Marcado Lopez. Dwayne Mantle, Jr. Rachel Mata. <laughs> Mr. 
and Daniel Melton. I tell you what, people, these kids right here are wonderful. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you, SROs. I appreciate your help. And SROs work is never done. If you notice, some of them came in uniform tonight because they've been working right up until time to come here tonight. So um, I appreciate all the hard work that they do, and I appreciate them coming out tonight. right along here tonight. Okay. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Chief Giddens if he would come up. Okay. Um, this is the time when we get to announce the overall winner for the year. Each year, one student typically stands out above the others. <coughs> And our board members are the ones who make these selections. So at the end of the year, I take those two winners from the previous ceremonies and I have the board members vote uh, on the most outstanding one for the year. So at this time, I would like to take the opportunity to announce our winner. I think I'm going to let the chief do it since I made him come up here. Can we get a drum roll? That was good. The top winner is Tierra Grant. Chief did a fantastic job with that, didn't he? Congratulations. I gotta get my points where I can when I can. <laughs> that doesn't happen often. Don't hurt yourself, please. <laughs> Tierra is a, an amazing young lady, as all of these students are. Just real quick, quick, I'll recap for some of you who don't know what she did. Um, she works for Cinemark up by the mall, and um, she had two of her fellow employees and friends who found a debit card in one of the theaters one afternoon and they decided to keep it. They told her about it and they said they were going shopping. Well, she tried to tell them that that wasn't the right thing to do and they insisted they were still going to do it. So she told the uh, officer that was working the security detail about it. Um, and they had already gone over to the mall and done a little bit of shopping. The gentleman, realizing he had lost his debit card, went ahead and called it in as lost. And actually, I think it was a credit card, not a debit card. But he and his family were here in town for a, I think it was a baseball game or something um, that their son was playing in. Well, that credit card was their only means of paying for their needs while they were here. And now they didn't have that. So they were really concerned about how they were going to manage to stay and then let alone even get home. Um, when uh, the officer found that out, he contacted the owner. He went into the mall. He was able to recover the card and he contacted the owner. Um, but it, it was at such a time that he couldn't call and get the credit card reinstated. But the 
family of the two young ladies who took this card, they had money set aside for their girls to go to senior prom. Uh-huh. Y'all see where this is going, don't you? <laughs> so not only did Tierra do the right thing, but the parents did the right thing. And the parents said to the girls, well, you made a bad choice, so that money we were going to give you for senior prom is now going to go to this gentleman and his family so that they can finish out their tournament here in town and get safely home. So that's what they did. They made that family whole again. And those young ladies, um, they learned a valuable lesson. Uh, the gentleman decided not to pursue any kind of criminal uh, charges against the young ladies. But Tierra, uh, when you talk about integrity, SL, that is the true definition of integrity right there. I mean, speaking up against one's friends, it's hard enough to do it against people that you don't know, but to do it against your friends and your coworkers, I mean, that just speaks volumes. So having said that, let's give Tierra another round of applause. Now, everybody wants to know what's in that bag, right? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. One of our sponsors, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that wasn't here because they're in Alaska. All right, that's the Bosco family, and they own uh, the Beef O'Brady's here in town, and the wife and daughter are the former owners of um, our Edible Arrangements. But they have been sponsors of ours for years, and so one of the things that they do for us, besides giving us the, the gift cards and stuff for the kids throughout the year, they donate something for our, our final winner. And so she's going to be receiving, or has received, a $100 Visa gift card and a certificate for a wing party for her and, what does it say on there? How many friends? Like 10 friends or 9 friends? 8 friends? I know, I have 8 friends. They could probably eat a whole lot of chicken wings. <laughs> I, I have a son who could polish them off pretty quickly, too. So, hey, if you don't have 8 people you'd like to take, Tierra, I like chicken wings. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Also, also, she, of course, received that beautiful acrylic plaque um, that has her name and everything on it and it's got the Do the Right Thing logo. And uh, I think there's a few things in the little bag that she got as well, but she's also receiving a Kindle Fire 10, the newest edition. Right? Yeah. And again, all of this is because our sponsors make it possible. One last time, let's give all of them a round of applause. Please. Now I'm going to let the chief come up and give some uh, closing remarks, and then I have just one more thing, and then we're going to have you all on your way. Thank you, Lord. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I tell you, it's, it's hard not to feel good on a night tonight, like tonight. You know, we, uh, in law enforcement, we don't always see the good of society, and sometimes we can become pretty cynical folks, but it's times like these, and when we have to do the right thing, uh, do the right thing programs at our police department that it reminds us of why we do our jobs and the good that is out there in our communities. We've heard a lot of applause tonight and I want to join that but I'd like to uh, talk to Mr. Frisbee for a moment. I thought that it was an inspirational and educational speech that you gave this evening. I thought it was dynamic that you brought the kids up and you spoke directly to them so can we give him another round of applause. And I know we're clapping a lot, but uh, I would also like to give the parents, the teachers, and the administrators that are here tonight, hold on for just a second, our school resource officers, again, that work so hard and so diligently to protect our kids, which are our futures of tomorrow. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Lori and, and how she kept this program going. It's an uh, inspiration for all of us, but she works very, very diligently. This is our 16th Do the Right Thing Award. And I tell you, it's going as strong as ever. So would you give yourselves a round of applause for those folks? I promise not to be much longer, but this is about our kids and what they do and what, they, what they're showing us. And our future's bright as long as we have children like this that are coming up. And from the police chief to all you kids out there, I just want to tell you personally and amongst for all our staff members how proud I am of each and every one of you for doing the right thing. You stand hands and shoulders above your peers when you do the right thing. And you set a shining light and a shining example for all the other kids. 
So thank you so much, and let's give them a round of applause. Again, thank you for everybody for coming out. I'd like to thank the uh, staff from Lone Palm for allowing us to do this. They're also a major uh, supporter of ours, and uh, we couldn't do this without them for as long as I know we've been coming here. So again, on behalf of the Lakeland Police Department um, and the City Administration with Mr. Delgado and the Commissioner uh, Walker here, thank you all so very much for coming out tonight. Have a great evening, and be safe driving home. Thank you.